Welcome to my Monstera jungle! Today in this video, I'm going to talk to you about all my Monstera Deliciosa collection and I'm going to talk to you about plant care. I really recommend this plant for beginners and experienced plant collectors. So I'm going to review with you all the things I've done to have these Monsteras happy and hopefully this will encourage you to go ahead and go and go and get one if you don't have one or if to troubleshoot in case you're having any issues with your Monsteras. I think you won't regret it. I think you're going to love it. If you like greenifying your house, making it a jungle, you definitely have to learn about the Monstera Deliciosa. So let's keep it short and simple and let's get through this. To get started, I must introduce you to every single one of my monsteras because every single one of them is very loved by me. So I'm going to get started with the left side here. We move over right over here and this is my first monstera ever. The first time I got a monstera, I got it, um, I got a smaller one and this one, but this one was a small one. It was about $12.99 and it was, let me show you an idea on its size. It was basically this size, but it had maybe six or seven leaves. And uh, it's grown and this one is only, this is the growth of only about a year and a half, a year and three months and Guys, it has really, really grown. So I wanted to teach you this about Monsteros or review with this that uh, Monsteros grow fast, okay? So if you get a small one, it will grow fast in a year span. So um, be patient and you're gonna see a lot of growth and you're gonna love it. Another thing I wanted to also tell you is that when you first get it and it's a baby Monstera will have just the heart green leaves and it does not have the fenestrated leaves. As it starts maturing, you start seeing the fenestrations. As you can see, this one here has a mix of some leaves with fenestrations, some without. So this is a, a young one, right? So right next to this one, I have a big Monstera. And this is an update for my $5 Monstera purchases. I don't know if you guys saw that video, and if you didn't, I recommend that you go and look for it because it's pretty cool how I found this one at Lowe's and it was on clearance and it was uh, $5. And this whole plant here, plus a second plant. There was two plants potted in one pot and it was $5. I ended up separating my Monsteras in two different pots and uh, they did great. I have not had any issues with any pests. Uh, they did great. They did not have any issues with any pests. So, um, but you know, they were in clearance because you can see here, there was some damage like in the traveling, like some leaves were kind of ripped and then some, the plant was actually growing kind of crooked. So that's why I unpotted it and repotted it and staked it up and basically it was fixed. So if you ever see Monsteras in clearance, I really recommend, um, you know, you can always check for pests um, and you can always treat your plant when it arrives, just even if you don't see pests, just in case it had something. But I've had really no issues so far with plants um, coming home with pests from Lowe's, but it's not, that's just a chance. You can get pests at a nursery, you can get pests anywhere you get a plant. Pests just happen, right? And it can happen in nature, it happens. So, but always check your plants. It's always better to buy one without any pests. But anyhow, this has been a good experience here. And then over here is my Monstera Thai Constellation. If you guys want to learn about my, what this plant has gone through, I recommend that you see another video called, I think, my Monstera Thai Constellation Nightmare because we almost lost this baby. And yes, this is the most expensive plant. Um, yeah, to this day, I haven't purchased a plant that's more, more expensive than this one. Uh, but it was still not as expensive as they're going for now because this was before the whole plant craziness happened. So... I was happy that I was able to get this one, but yes, it did go through root rot. All the way that I, we had to chop off all of its roots completely and re-root it in water 
that's basically what I ended up doing that was the most successful and then transferred it to soil. So I have two videos out there that you guys can see the whole life of this Monstera tag insulation. And I'm happy to show you guys an update on how she's doing. And finally, we see a new leaf coming here. So there's a new leaf that's gonna come. So I feel like she's kind of stabilized for a bit when it was in soil, trying to grow its roots. And now I, we're seeing that growth. Um, when they have the white, this the variegated ones, they have the white in them, or is it the creamish color? This is the Thai constellation, so it's more of a cream. Sometimes it can, I think we put it too close to a grow light and it burned it. So be careful with having direct sun or a grow light that's too close to it because it's very, um, uh, this plot, the white is very sensitive versus the green monsteras, <laughs> it's hard for them to burn. Um, let's see, right over here, this is another $5 monstera. And maybe it's the other half that I unpotted from the other plant that I told you the two plants came in one pot for $5. And uh, another one, guys. <laughs> this one's gorgeous, I love this one. And yeah, they've been giving me new leaves. So, yes, yeah, so I, again, I'm telling you, these plants are easy to find, they're not very expensive. Here's another monstera. I don't know if you guys have seen it when I do some videos, and this is my, my background here. This one's more of a fuller monstera, right? There's like a lot of leaves going on, and it keeps giving me leaves, but not leaves with the holes in them. Just fenestrations, but no holes. Versus like, this is even more mature. When you get those holes, that's even more mature of a monstera versus this one still also kind of juvenile, but very, very full and very easy to take care of. Okay, so I think, uh, oh, there's a little elbow, monster elbow in the front. And that one also was kind of like a happy find because it was an accidental find basically at a local nursery. They were selling it for the regular price of a monstera. And uh, yeah, I paid $12.99 for that one. It actually came with another monstera plant that was all green. I separated it, put it there, and it's given us a new leaf. And uh, as you can see there in the front, it has a little white in it. Unfortunately, uh, we have gone, we thought we had a little bit of thrips, we, and we, I panicked, I sprayed it with 100% alcohol, and it kind of burned the leaves a little bit. So I should not have done that. Um, but I was in panic mood. <laughs> um, I'll talk about what you should use usually when you want to treat it for pests. Um, so you won't burn your plant. Okay, so that's it. Oh, and I have this one. I cut off a top cutting and I put it in water and look how well Monstera's root in water. I've had a lot of success with them rooting in water. When I was trying to reroot my Thai constellation, I tried it um, in soil and it was no success. Um, and then did I try sphagnum? No, I went directly to water and I tried sphagnum and other plants and I feel like water has been the quickest for me. And so far, um, yeah, I'm very happy with propagating water. And you can leave a monstera sitting in water for, I wanna say forever if you wanted to. All you have to do is once in a while, maybe give it a little bit of fertilizing to the water. Something like liquid dirt. Um, no, that would turn your water dark though. Uh, super Thrive, any, I guess, Depends, right? It, some things can change the water's color and I wouldn't like to see that. So I usually keep it in water and I don't fertilize it for a few months and when I'm ready, I just change it up to, to soil or wherever you wanna put your plant in. So, but it looks pretty if you ever wanna have a little cutting in water. And you can gift it to a friend. Cause yeah, I am getting over, I have a lot of ones there. I'm getting ready to give some away. And, and with one of these big ones is gonna be gifted. And um, that's why I wanted to go ahead and do this video and show you guys before I get I, I, some of them go to other homes. Now, how I take care of them. I water them whenever they, the soil is dry. Um, so basically, normally I wait until all the soil is just about dry, three fourths dry, basically. Um, the way I do it, I use a moisture meter. Didn't bring it with me, but you know what it is, right? It's, you know, the little metal thing it has a moisture meter and you put it in the soil. Um, yeah, there, there's always one close to me because we're always checking our plants. This is a moisture meter, okay? This is the one I have. I've heard some people say they don't like them, they don't work, and I feel like, well, maybe, yeah, maybe some can come defective, but I know mine works. So I really, really liked it because I normally, 
I feel it's more accurate than just my finger out all the time. So basically what I do, for example, here's a tie constellation. I stick it in the soil and whatever it reads, I can't see what it's reading, but if it's dry, definitely needs water. Like right now, seems like it's dry. <laughs> if it's moist, maybe I can wait a few days. Well, if it's wet, that's usually when I just have water to plant. According to the soil composition, that you have um, is how, how quickly they dry off. This one, this tie constellation, I did it in a very, very chunky perlite orchid mix, and that's why it dries really quickly. But I don't, I don't, I think I water that one like once a week. Now, this bigger monster over here has a bigger pot. Any any monster that's in a bigger pot, usually um, it retains, it can doesn't dry as quickly. So this one here is measuring four or five, maybe. Yeah, if it's closer to the dry, like a four, then I would water it. I would go ahead and water it. If it was maybe measuring a solid middle, like moist, like five, six, I would wait a couple of days. So these are not sensitive plants where if it dries for a few days and you forget to water it, that it's gonna dry up its leaves and die, it's not. And that's why I like this plant. Because other plants like ferns, like begonias, if you miss it and you're late a few days, then they sure, they, Crinkle, dry, brown, and, and, dry, and fall off. Those plants are harder. These are easier because they can tolerate you forgetting to water them. Um, so yeah, they're not, they don't need water that often. Um, fertilizing. I usually fertilize with fish emulsion. Fish fertilizer. It's stinky, but it's good. Why I like it, it won't burn your plants. It's one of the ones that won't burn your plants. So I feel like for beginners, it's a good type of fertilizer because you don't have to be worried that maybe you're gonna burn your plant if you put too much in it. Now, how much do you put in it? You read the instructions. You usually is recommended to do even less than what it calls for. Now, what I've been doing is, this is from Dollar Tree. I measured two quarts and I usually put like one teaspoon of this in here. And that's it. I go in and water my plants. Um, there's other fertilizers out there. Um, you guys are welcome to try. This is not a very sensitive plant. Uh, like I said, just read the instructions and maybe still do less than what the instructions call for if you're using the chemical fertilizers. This is an organic fertilizer. Um, I've also been using liquid dirt and that's also organic, um, but I just started with that. So far, these plants have been living with fish emulsion and that's what they've been doing great. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Now, lighting. These can do well in medium to bright indirect light. Morning sun's great. Um, I even have one where it gets a little bit of afternoon sun and it's been fine, no burning of the leaves. I will watch it more as the summer comes along and the sun is hotter. You always have to watch your plant with that afternoon sun. Um, they won't burn them, but they're cool because you can have this one here has been sitting in medium light and it's been happy and it's been growing. So let's see, where have I had most of these? Um, uh, most of them have been medium light, I want to say, and they have been giving me more leaves. So I like that because sometimes most of our house usually is medium, right? It's hard to find the spots that is higher, bright, indirect, or morning sun. So yes, it's easier to find a spot to put a monstera in. And of course, you can buy a little one if you don't have a lot of space. Or you can buy a big one if you want to make your house a jungle quickly. Um, humidity. Humidity, they have been fine throughout the whole year. I live in North Carolina, so um, we do have high humidity in spring and summer. And in winter, we did go down to maybe 30% humidity in my house and they were fine. Um, they might not give you as many leaves in winter, um, but I feel like I still got a leaf or two here, there. So I still got some growth through the winter, but, uh, spring and summer is when they really pick up. Um, I think those are all the basic tips on how to take care of a Monstera. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed and this was informative to you and it can help you have more happy plants because happy plants make happy plant parents, right? So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you like this type of um, videos. And I'll keep on sharing my plant care tips. And we, I also share your tips 
on how do you take care of your monsters in the comments below if i missed something if something is really being successful for you that way the, everybody else who reads the comments can also um, learn from each other thank you for watching bye